Hi human, I'm Lola of Talk. Today I'll be taking you through the Revit beginner tutorial. This tutorial is for beginners, people who have little or no knowledge in Revit and would love to learn more about Revit architecture. When you open up your Revit interface, it typically looks like this with your project files up here and your family files down here. Family files refer to things like um, doors, windows, tables, chairs, families. Those things are grouped into families. They are grouped together. So if we were creating something like that, we would come down here. And while your project files are usually here, that's your complete buildings and projects that you're currently working on. Typically, yours might have other templates already pre-installed here. But if yours is like mine and there's no template pre-installed, well, I've left a link in the description box below where you can download the templates that we'll be using for this project. So what you'd want to do is just create new. And we're going to select that template that you've um, downloaded. In my case, I'm just picking the architectural template here. And you see, under create new, make sure it's on project. And just click OK. So voila, your template opens up to a new project space. So let's go ahead with navigating through the Revit interface. Now you see that this part of the Revit interface is called the ribbon. And on the ribbon, we have various tabs like the architecture tab, the structures tab, systems tab, insert, annotate, and all of that. But the ones that you really have to bother about, you, you don't have to stress yourself about all of them. You just worry about the architecture tab because that has most of the tools that we'll be using when we are building. Like the walls, doors, windows, components, columns, roofs and things like that. The next tab that we use often is the insert tab. This one has tools we need to import files such as um, images, AutoCAD files, and 3D files, and even apply pictures to uh, surfaces when we're rendering. Another good thing about Revit is you don't need to worry about learning all the tools all at once because when you keep your mouse, your cursor over one of the tools or any of the tools you're interested in, you see that a drop down comes and it shows you what that tool is used for and sometimes it can show you more about how to use that tool so the next tab we have to worry about is the annotate tab this is where we have our dimensions details text tags things that we need to detail our presentation or construction drawings next tab we really use is the massing and site tab and this one has the topo surface site components packing components and all of that then the next tab is the view tab this lets you view your project so to speak uh, we have our 3d view here our sections call outs elevations plans and we'll get to learn how to use all of this during the course of the project then our modify tab those are the only tabs we have to worry about this white space is our drawing space. This is where all the magic happens. These four things are elevation. These are our elevation heads. So this is our project browser. This is where we find all the things that are currently in the project at a certain point in time. Like now we have floor plans in the project, ceiling plans, elevations, but we don't have legend shadows and sheets. Now, how do we know that? Because there is no drop down sign. By the side of this one we have a drop down menu for the type of views that we have in this project but we don't have any legends but when we create legends we'll find and even right now we don't have any 3d view in this project so an easy way to create your 3d view you can just click on 3d view under your view tab and you see that once we click on that 3d view is instantly created in the project browser so it's just helps you navigate better through your projects uh, and right above the project browser is the properties tab so the properties tab tells you the properties of uh 
your either the page we are viewing at the moment or the the selected item that we are trying to discover more about i'll show you now currently we're in our 3d view space and it's telling us oh you're in your 3d view space uh, the scale you're viewing any object at in your space is 1 to 100 and the detail level is medium things like that camera high elevation target elevation and all of that if we were to go back to our level one all you have to do is double click on that level you see that it switches up and tells us oh we're now back in level one assuming i put a wall in this space and you see i click on maybe one of the walls you see that it's giving me the property of that wall now telling me that it's a generic wall 200 millimeter wall it is room bounding it's not connected to anything above it but it's 8000 millimeters high and it's giving me the length area volume so it just has the properties of whatever i selected or the space you're currently working and at and it's going to become really useful through the course of using revit so right above the ribbon is the quick access toolbar and it's just what it is it helps you quickly access things like save like undo like print like measure like text and your 3d view this tiny house is your 3d view there's your section so if you want it below the ribbon what you can do is click on this black button here and just click show below the ribbon but i prefer mine above the ribbon so i'm just going to click here and just click show above ribbon yeah and how to navigate in our interface now navigating through the interface to go from level to level all you have to do is double click on that level that you want to or that page that you want to you want to go to 3d view double click on that you want to go to level one double click on that level two you want to go to the sides double click on that no problem so now the two things that we use in our 2d view because we're currently on our site plan and it's a 2d view so the two things you need to know in this space are how to zoom and how to pan if you're using a mouse with a scroll wheel all you have to do is to zoom in all you have to do is roll that scroll wheel away from you just roll it and when you do you find that you're zooming in and when you roll it towards yourself you find that you're zooming out and when you hold down that scroll key to move around you find that you're panning you're panning in the in the view um if you don't have the mouse with the scroll wheel you can just use your navigation wheel which is usually hung up somewhere around here and see that you have your zoom pan rewind don't worry about this rewind for now so for pan all you have to do is you see that it's highlighted in purple so like, like i don't know so you just um, hold it down and you're able to pan around that exact point will be able to do that so it helps you but it's not as great as using your scroll wheel if i'm being honest so they have other zoom options like zoom in region zoom out so that's it for navigating in 2d space so now let's go back to our 3d space to see uh, an extra option the same zooming in zooming out and panning features also apply in our also apply in our 3d space but there's an extra dimension and that is orbiting in this space all you have to do is hold down shift and hold down your scroll wheel and start to move around so when you do that you see that you're able to orbit easily through your project like you're able to turn around your turn your project around and see more of it but some people prefer to use this view cube i don't know why but you if this is what you want it's your life there's also we also have the navigation wheel also you see we have the orbit option we have the zoom option we have the pan option we have all of this for navigation in 
our navigation wheel so just click escape to exit the navigation wheel so next we're going to go back to our uh, 2d level because now we're going to learn how to select objects to select an object in a revit all you have to do is just click on it but i do mean you wanted to select multiple objects what you would need to do is put click on your control key on your keyboard and you see that a plus sign is uh, added to the cursor and this is just telling you you can add as much as you want but maybe we don't want this wall and we don't want this wall and maybe this wall we just needed this wall how would we remove a selection all we had to do was hold down our shift key and we'll be able to deselect because you see that a minus sign appears on top of the cursor telling us that we can remove as much as we want so that is one way to select objects in revit another way that we can select objects in revit is by using the selection box now a selection box goes two ways selecting from right to left and selecting from left to right so i'll explain both of them when you select from right to left you find that the selection box is in a dotted line and when this dotted line hits any of the elements in the space it they become automatically selected like if it just touches it even just a little see that it's just selected automatically just like that while the one using from left to right until that element is like completely inside the selection box it's not going to get highlighted it's not going to get selected so this is really nice when you're trying to isolate certain objects to select while touching other objects so the next thing we have to learn about selection in revit is how to use the tab key now we wanted to select all of these walls at the same time without having to click 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 what you could simply do is just hover over one of the walls as long as they are connected walls they will all highlight so hover over one of the walls click your tab key and then left click and you find that you've selected the walls easily and all of these selection techniques also apply in your 3d space so let's go and explore it so you can click here or click on your quick access toolbar and just go to your 3d view so now to select you click to add selection hold down control click 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 to remove selection hold down shift click 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 so that's that yeah so that's it for navigation and selection in revit and we've explored certain parts of the interface i just want to shout out to chikodi and daniela for inspiring this project you guys are really awesome in the next tutorial we're going to learn how to use our grids and levels and how we can and how we can start to work on our floor plan for the entire series we're going to create our first floor plan yay if you like this tutorial leave a comment in the comment box below telling me what you liked about the tutorial and if you didn't like it tell me exactly what you didn't like about it see you in the next tutorial signing out is lola of Tor.